This is gonna be fun. Wow, this actually looks quite a bit different than my Roku 3. Sort of a matte finish on the top with the shiny Roku logo showing through. That, that actually looks pretty good. Comes with a little Roku tab, just like on my previous model. Let's set this to the side. And here's the quick start guide. Here's the remote, which is sort of a matte finish. Now I'm coming from a Roku 3, so I sort of already know what to expect. And it looks like they've upgraded some buttons. And the texture is a little bit different than on my Roku 3. Comes with headphones. Power adapter and it comes with two AA batteries for the remote so that's good so here's everything that comes in the box you've got your Ethernet port HDMI it also takes a micro SD card and there's where you plug in the power adapter So here's what I'm upgrading from. The Roku 3, which has a high gloss finish versus the Roku Premiere Plus, which seems a lot bigger. I'm, now usually as products get newer, they get smaller. Um, this one here is like a hockey puck. This one here is like a pancake. You can see that both of them have the same ports on the back. You can see the Roku 3 is just a little bit thicker. Now, the Roku 3 does have a USB port and the Premiere doesn't. I believe you have to go to the Ultra. When the Roku 3 first came out, I paid around $100. Now, since it's older, it's dropped down to the same price as the Premiere Plus on sale for just under $50 on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description where you can find both of these. So this is the remote from the Roku Premiere Plus, and this is the remote from the Roku 3. They're very similar in size, but the Roku 3 is a lot shinier. It looks really good with this high gloss finish, but you have to clean it constantly. There was an A and B button for playing games on the Roku 3, and it doesn't have that on the Plus. I think you have to get the Ultra. And you've got these Netflix, Sling, HBO Now, and Hulu buttons, where on this one, you don't really have that. Another thing that's different is this one. The Roku 3 remote actually came with this strap, which is pretty convenient. You can hang it from stuff, like you can hang it on the treadmill, or really it's just easy to dangle it from that, or put it on your wrist. It reminds me of when you would play the Wii. It doesn't actually work the same way, unfortunately. They have pretty much the same volume buttons. One's just a little bit shinier versus the matte finish. And they both have the headphone jack, which is pretty useful sometimes. I thought I would just show you what the Roku app looks like real quick if you're not familiar with it. So here's all your channels that you can add or delete that's on your TV. Looks like they updated this app since the last time I used it. These are the same channels that are, show up on your TV and then the channel store, which basically is where you can get all the new stuff. I actually think this might be easier to add the channels using the app versus on the Roku. And here's just what they're advertising that's on right now. 
Now this is actually pretty handy to use the remote, which is really good if you need to type. So then you can use your phone's keyboard. So it's the same buttons as on the remote, just on your phone instead. There you got music, photos, and videos. I guess if you want to show on your TV. Settings, it's where you can edit the name, device info. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So here you can choose between wireless and ethernet. One of the reasons why I chose this model of Roku is mainly for the ethernet because my internet isn't very fast and if you use wireless, that's gonna be even slower. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up through the ethernet. And now it's just checking to make sure it's connected. So it's saying there's an update available and let's go ahead and do that. And then it's just gonna restart the device. So here it looks like it's gonna set the display type. Go ahead and hit okay and just say okay again. So here you can choose which display and I'll just say 1080p. That's all this TV can show. So I'm just gonna say okay, go to automatic. And then I'll say yes, screen looks good. So basically after you log in and hit continue, then it'll automatically update this screen. Now it says I have 69 channels, but I don't use hardly any of those. So I think I'm gonna have to delete those once it gets done. Right now I think it's putting all of the channels I have on my other Roku devices onto the new one. So this could take a little bit of time to do that. And this is all gonna depend on your internet speed. And so since I already have a Roku 3, I'm I'm pretty familiar with how this is set up. And to me, this looks identical to my Roku 3. I primarily use this for Netflix, but once in a while, I'll use a few of these other channels. So if you're not familiar with Roku, there is a ton of content as far as news, streaming channels, uh, movies, basically anything you can think of, there's gonna be something on the Roku for you. So who is the Premiere Plus for? I would say someone like me who needs Ethernet instead of the sticks that are Wi-Fi only, or if you're just looking to pay half the price of what the newer versions are. Don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up if you haven't already. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.